Hello, everyone. My name is Rosie Lalonde, and I would like to welcome you to my webinar, The Why and How of Flower Photography. As I start this presentation, I want to give you the short version of my photographic career. I picked up my first camera at the age of 22 and simply fell in love. Initially, I shot slide film, but after about a year, I switched to film and opened a small studio in my home. Four years later, I began a family and did not photograph professionally for almost 20 years. In 2003, the digital revolution was on the horizon, and my husband and I opened a wedding photography and video business along with our two daughters. We were very successful, and my oldest daughter still runs that business today. After retiring to Florida, I wasn't sure what I wanted to photograph, and then I found flowers. The minute I did, I knew that every step I had ever taken in my photographic career had led me to this time and place, and I just couldn't be happier. Moving on, I want to share what I've learned and practice daily with regard to flower photography. Photography does start in your soul. Yusuf Karsh of Olympus Camera said, Look and think before clicking the shutter. The heart and mind are the true lens of the camera. So look, think, and I'm going to add to that, let the subject choose you. We have choices when photographing any subject. And when we photograph flowers, we usually have ample choices. But not every flower is a candidate for being photographed. Walk through the garden area and wait for a flower to beckon you. Be aware of your surroundings and you will learn to see with your heart. Remember, the heart and the mind are the true lens. Is it possible to make a photograph. Ansel Adams said, we don't just take photographs, we make photographs. Ansel Adams lived in the darkroom for days and even weeks to process just one image. Now our cameras still can't give us a finished image, so we have some responsibility. When we used film, the lab made our images beautiful. We are now the lab so it's up to us to make the most of our image. A good place to start is with Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw for basic fundamentals of optimizing color and light. If you don't have a commitment to post-production, your images will never be as great as they can be. Post-processing is necessary. As I've just explained, photography is not complete without post-processing. To aid with post-processing, I'm going to recommend shooting in RAW mode because RAW mode will help you to attain the best color and exposure possible. A RAW file will give you a lot of latitude with under or even overexposed images. A RAW file is also going to provide enough pixels to ensure flawless high-end post-processing. Going beyond basic post-processing will give your image more polish, and using Photoshop or another plugin will go a long way in making your image stand out among the rest. Your photographs reflect who you are, so capture and finish your images with excellence. Here is my raw file straight out of camera, and as you can see, I have a little spot here from some dust on my sensor. For all intents and purposes, you would think that this looks pretty good, but here is the same image finished in Lightroom and can also be finished this way in Adobe Camera Raw. As you can see, I've gotten rid of my little lens dust, but the light and bright of this image just makes you smile and want to say, wow. Here is our straight out of camera image, and here is our post-processed image. That's quite a difference. Light is necessary to photograph, and Jay Mizell said, there is no bad light. There is spectacular light and difficult light. 
it's up to you to use the light that you have. There are certain types of light that are better for flower photography than others. And as Jay Mizell said, it is up to you to use the light you have. Filtered daylight is best for flower photography. Direct sunlight creates shadows and hot spots. Direct sunlight causes harsh colors or intensified contrasts such as crushed blacks or no midtones. You can use a white umbrella or a diffuser to shade your subject if direct sunlight makes it impossible to capture the subject. I know that's hard to do by yourself, but I'm going to recommend that you photograph with a buddy so that you can take turns providing shade for each other. If you have a choice, wait for the right light to photograph flowers. Now that might be earlier or later in the same day, or perhaps even on another day. Here is our image in direct sunlight, and this is the straight out of the camera image. Here is the SOOC with a diffuser being applied before photographing the very same flower. Here is the image that was in the direct sunlight after some work in Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw. Here is our diffused image after processing in Lightroom. And of course, you can use ACR. Here's the direct sunlight straight out of camera. Here's the direct sunlight after it was processed in Lightroom. Now, as you can see, I've been able to pick up some of the midtone color here, but I cannot get rid of the deep shadows, which are a huge distraction to this beautiful dahlia. Here is the SOOC that was shot under diffused sunlight. And of course, that looks pretty good until we see what is possible in Lightroom after making some adjustments. I've also processed this image in Nick filters for a bit of softening. If you're working and you do not have enough light, you can always add more light in Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, or Photoshop as needed. Let's talk about positioning the camera. Ansel Adams said, knowing where to stand makes a great photograph. I'm going to say knowing where to sit or stand along with camera position are the key. Start with the camera on the same level as the subject. Whether you're sitting or standing, that would mean having a flower on the same level as the camera. Shooting from high above your flower can produce cluttered backgrounds and an unnatural representation of the subject, very much like shooting someone's face from high above them. Shooting from below the subject can introduce unwanted elements such as the sky, extra light, or unwanted clutter. Your camera angle will always affect the flower's angle. So flowers are best presented when they are photographed chin up. And since a flower cannot reposition itself, you can't say, lift your chin. The camera has to tilt to achieve the proper angle for chin up in a flower. So here is the flower as it grew naturally and the chin is down. I tilted the camera and now I have chin up. And I like this presentation much better. What do we do about composition when photographing flowers? Like any subject, the rule of thirds works well with many flowers, but it is not the be all and end all. In fact, I would recommend that you not let rules get in the way of what is pleasing to your eye. Filling your frame with the flower is an effective composition. So is cropping in camera, which means cutting off a portion of the subject makes for a good composition as well. Using your camera's live view can help you to see a pleasing composition that you don't necessarily see looking through the lens. Here is an image that I shot in rule of thirds. Here is an image that I shot with negative space on the right. And remember that your negative space is always going to be where the flower is facing. You can fill in blank areas with additional leaves or some extra design. 
This is an in-camera crop, and I really like this image. This is filling the frame with part of the image, so we don't see the entire flower, but in my mind, it shows exactly what is important. Obtaining proper focus with a flower can take some practice. First of all, you want to move your camera's focus point over the place you want and focus. If your lens hunts for focus, switch to manual focus. Experiment with different focal points to see which focus is more pleasing to you. That is especially important when you have shallow depth of field. When you are going for a lot of blur, generally, the closest part of the subject to the lens is the best focal point. If your aperture is set for less blur, vary your focal point to see what you like best. You can also use a photo stacking technique as you are shooting to get the best or the most focus out of the flower. Perspective and focus. Not every subject is at eye level. So as I said earlier, sometimes you just need to sit down or you may need to get on a ladder if you're trying to photograph a flower that is in a tree or high up somewhere else. Work your subject. Photograph it from every conceivable angle. You don't have to photograph the entire subject, so be creative. Add a little tilt as you focus to get a creative crop. But remember, a little tilt goes a long way. Your aperture will always affect focus. So in wide apertures that let in the maximum amount of light, and those would be lenses where we set aperture between 1.2 and 2.8. This is also known as maximum aperture or wide open. Narrow aperture lets in the minimum amount of light, but you're going to get the most focus, and that would be from f16 to f32. That is also known as stopping down, or a small aperture. The closer you get to your subject, especially when using a macro lens, the smaller the depth of field. If you want more focus, you will need to stop down by using a smaller aperture. Your aperture choice will be your focus choice. Set your camera to aperture priority or manual mode. Never use auto mode or shutter priority mode to photograph flowers. Always move your focus point to the exact spot you want to focus on. Make sure you know how to select the aperture and move the focus point on your camera. This is an image shot with a 60 millimeter macro at f2.8. As you can see, there is very little in focus. Standing at approximately the same distance away, I changed my aperture to f.4, and while I don't have a lot of focus in the petals, I do have wonderful focus in the capitulum, or the center of the flower. This image was shot with an 80 to 400 millimeter telephoto lens at f16. And as you can see, I have wonderful depth of field and beautiful focus. I'd like to give you some post-production tips and tricks. So let's look at a few techniques for post-processing flower images. As my husband and I were driving along I-95 in North Carolina, we saw acres and acres of these pink cosmos. So, of course, I absolutely had to stop and take some pictures. The problem was we were on a deadline to get somewhere, and the first camera that I pulled out had my 105 millimeter macro on it, so this was about as good of a shot as I was going to get. Bringing my RAW image into Adobe Camera Raw, I am going to crop this flower to a 4x5 or an 8x10 aspect ratio. Now I'm going to leave this lengthy stem here and I'm going to crop in a little bit on each side of the flower to bring down the headroom and leave it right about there and double click 
and there is my crop. The next thing I need to do is to apply color temperature and exposure settings in Adobe Camera Raw. You can also make all of these changes in Lightroom. According to my recipe, I need to adjust the temperature first. This particular camera seems to shoot very blue, so I am going to up my temperature so that I get that nice pink color that this Cosmos had. I don't want to add any more pink because it's going to affect the green, so I'm going to leave this at minus 5 in tint. Next, I'll go to my highlights and turn down my highlights so that I can get some more definition into the petals of this Cosmos. Then I'm going to increase my shadows. And as I do that, I want you to see what happens to this shadow area right here. So increasing my shadows, look at how much more light I'm getting. And let's go back so that we can see the whole screen. And of course, I'm going to take this back down to zero and then back up to the 88. That's huge. I'm very happy with this. Next, I'm going to up my whites. And this is still a little bit on the dark side globally, so I'm going to add just a pinch of exposure. And doing that, I'm going to need to take my highlights back down a little bit. Now, this is still too dark, so I'm going to open up my adjustment brush panel, all of my slider settings are at zero. So I'm going to make some marks right here in this area that I want to lighten. And I'm going to lower the highlights just a little bit. And upping the shadows really worked. So I'm going to do that a little bit more and then add a little bit of white, which is bringing in contrast. And now I'm going to hit this with some exposure. That's good. Now, I want to get my brush nice and small so that I can get into this area right here and make sure that I get this a little bit lighter. I am going to touch the plus sign under my brush. And of course, my sliders did not change. So that's going to give me the opportunity to add that same adjustment over again in these dark areas. And again, I'm working with a nice small brush. And I'm going to pull back out, touch the plus key again, go to my ellipsis, and reset local correction settings to zero out all of my sliders. Do you want to enlarge the size of my brush and just paint a little bit right here? Of course, nothing has happened because I have not touched my sliders yet. I'm going to lower my highlights, up my shadows, up my whites. Look at that. And then add a little exposure. To that, I'm going to add a little bit of saturation so that I have a nice pink flower. Now that's looking just about perfect. So I'm going to open this in Photoshop. Here's my image out of Adobe Camera Raw. Now, the first thing I do want to do is I want to remove this area of distraction. And whenever I have a distraction that is on a corner or an edge, I don't like to use the healing function in Adobe Camera Raw. Instead, I'm going to go to Photoshop's Patch Tool. And I'm going to make a selection and move my selection to the left side of my screen. Now it's very easy to move this up and you'll see that as you do that, it's giving you a preview on the right hand side of what's going to happen. Make sure that the pink line has not gone away, that you have not moved this selection up. We want this right against the bottom so that we get this patch tool to line up the bottom edge. And Command D and that's looking good. I really want to remove this color up here. This lens was just beautiful at blurring the background. So since I don't really have distraction and I just want to remove this color, I am going to make a selection so that the selection is around this color I want to remove. 
and touching the letter B, I will get my Photoshop brush. And this is 7% hardness and 30% opacity. I'm going to make this a little harder at about 30%. I'm going to add a blank layer, sample this area right here, and begin to paint. I'm going to go to the right side and sample and begin to paint. And the trick with this is you have to keep sampling so the colors look like they belong. All right, I'm going to use Command-D to get rid of my selection. And I'm going to paint a little bit more in this area right there. And there we have the color Distraction Removal taken care of. I'm going to add another blank layer. I am going to touch the letter S for my clone stamp tool and make sure that I'm at 0% opacity. And I am going to just tap, tap, tap to make these areas very fluid. And then I'm going to cover my stem over with what I refer to as my color fog so that it appears that this stem is emanating out of this bokeh captured by this lens. I'm going to finish by going to the Levels Adjustment layer. And as you can see, there is nothing above the white slider that would indicate that this histogram sees white. So I am going to click and drag over until I see a blip in the histogram. And of course, it is pushed up my midtones as well, which is fine. Before, after. Let's make this a little smaller. Before, after. And that is just about perfect. This is ready for saving and posting to Facebook. The adjustment that I did on this Cosmos is only one of many different things that you can do to perfect your flowers in Photoshop. So I encourage you to take the time and the opportunity to make 2021 the year that you will take your post-processing skills to a new level of excellence.